Jeremy, as a global investor, you look at the themes which affect companies all over the world. What are some of the most important of those to you? I think the two most important themes for a global investor at the moment are firstly the trade issues and the tensions currently between the US and China, the impact that's going to have on trade in general around the world, uh, and on company profit margins as they cope with increased costs. So that's one, and that has particularly affected markets this year. The, the second issue, which has really driven markets over the past several years, has been to do with technological innovation. The way technology companies are discovering new markets and also disrupting old markets. The pressure that brings on old industries, the opportunities that we see arising in new technology. You invest all around the world and one of the things which we've noticed this year has been a divergence in performance between different markets. The US, for example, has done much better than some other parts of the world. What are the reasons for that and do you think it will continue? Well, the US has outperformed other markets this year, mainly because of trade tensions, the impact that has on other countries and the strength of the dollar. If you go back further in history, we had a prolonged underperformance of the US leading into the financial crisis and then outperformance as the US economy recovered. Now, um, if the trade tensions actually ease going into next year, I would expect the countries outside the US to recover more fully. On the other hand, if the trade tensions escalate further, then we could see a further outperformance of the US. Some markets around the world have, have, have notably underperformed, and one which uh, jumped out at me has been Japan. What's your view of that market? Well, the Japanese market is a really interesting market. The valuations are very low. Over the past several years, we've seen margins and profitability improve, and there's been an improving focus on shareholder returns. So that's all good. And I think that the thing that has held up the Japanese market this year, most of all, has been trade tensions and disrupted um, trade between Japan and, and China as a result of that. We've had a lot of volatility this year. I wonder what the causes of that might be and whether you think it will continue into 2019. Well, I think volatility is probably here to stay. Um, and in, in many respects, that's something that we as active managers ought to try and take advantage of. Um, but the things that really worry me that cause volatility are very, very difficult to predict. Uh, and at this stage, it's really geopolitics, and it's the action of, of world leaders in determining uh, you know, patterns of trade and, and so forth, um, as well as, to some extent, uh, monetary policy makers as well. Now, you mentioned the performance of the US market since the financial crisis. We've had a long bull market, and some people are saying that we're coming to the end of that. I wonder what some of the red flags might be that would indicate the end of the bull market. Well, I think the old adage of uh, bull markets don't die of old age is, is correct. Um, valuations as they stand today are really quite reasonable compared to company earnings. And in fact, this year, we've seen very good growth of company earnings around the world and essentially no rise in equity prices. So things are a lot cheaper now than they were a year ago. All being well, if the uh, trade issues settle down going into next year, I think that could be a reasonable setup for, for equities. Um, but it's by no means certain. Jeremy, thank you very much. Thank you.